Beasley Coliseum on the campus of Washington State University plays host to a rivalry that goes all the way back to 1907. Tonight, Elias Harris and the undefeated 10th rank in Zaga Bulldogs take on the Pac-12's best big man, Brock Modem and the Cougars. It will be rocking inside Beasley Coliseum tonight on the campus of Washington State as the Cougars host the Gonzaga Bulldogs undefeated looking for their first 9-0 start in school history along with the most outstanding player for the 1997 Final Four, national champion from Arizona, Miles Simon. Roxy Bernstein with you as Gonzaga again looking for their first 9-0 start in school history. Washington State still trying to find their identity but one thing's for sure when these two guys hook up, Miles, it's a huge rivalry, a lot at stake. Well, Roxy, you have in-state bragging rights at stake tonight. And then the biggest crowd of the season for Washington State is expected over 10,000 people here at Friel Court. And this has not been an easy place for the Zags to come in and get wins, losing two of their last three here in Pullman. Last year in the tip-off marathon, it was Kevin Pangus who hit nine threes, a school record against Washington State. Tonight, the Cougars trying to get even with the Zags. Washington State, Gonzaga from the Palouse. Lineups, one-on-one, -on -one, straight ahead. It is rocking inside Beasley Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. As undefeated 10th rank Gonzaga takes on Washington State, a long time rivalry up here in the Northwest. Miles, take us to our one-on-one. -on -one. What are you looking for tonight? Well, first for the Zags, this is arguably Mark Hughes' deepest team that he's ever had. Six different leading scores. Many guys can put it in the basket. Elias Harris, Kelly Olynyk, Kevin Pangos, Gary Bell. A lot of weapons, a lot of options. And then for Washington State, it's pretty much all about Brock Modem. He's the leading returning scorer in the Pac-12. He can get it done inside and out. So Gonzaga, Washington State, here are some of the players for Gonzaga who have been off to a hot start for Kevin, the Zags. Kevin Pangos really worked on his game during the offseason, wanted to be better, putting the ball on the floor, not just be a catch-and-shoot guy, spent some time with Steve Nash and the Canadian national team. He's been off to a great start so far for the unde undefeated Bulldogs. And for Washington State, Brock Modem, the Brisbane Australian native, he also, he goes inside and out, plays the post position, left-handed, can shoot the three, puts it on the floor, and has the ultimate green light for Ken Bone. Let's give you the starting lineups for this tilt. We'll start with the visiting team, the Zags, on the left. And Kevin Pangos there, the point guard for Gonzaga, but Elias Harris, a steady force now in his fourth season playing for the Bulldogs. On the other side, Mike Ladd assumes a big role in the absence of a true point guard for Washington State. He's kind of inherited that role for the Cougars. The Zoo crew looking on up here in the Palouse. These two schools separated by about 75 miles. And whenever they hook up, it seems to be a thrilling basketball game. Mark Few now in his 14th year at Gonzaga, eight times been named WCC Coach of the Year. Elias Harris will jump center for Gonzaga against Brock Modem. And the Zags control it wearing the navy blue, the home whites for the Cougars. Elias Harris looking to move in. Gonzaga may be the most efficient team offensively in the country. Guy Landrietti out to Gary Bell Jr. As Gonzaga the number one field goal shooting team in the land. Loose ball inside, run down Elias Harris, seven on the shot clock. Let's see if Pangos recognizes. Floater in the key, won't go, rebound run down, Mike Ladd, Washington State. And Roxy, when we watch this Washington State Cougars, they're, they're a point guard by committee team. Right now, Royce Woolrich, Mike Ladd, Kerning Drew, all of them, Devontae Lacey, who will get some time coming off the bench tonight. We'll be bringing that ball to the floor. Brock Modem hits the three. That's one thing Coach Mark View talked to us about in shoot-around. His fear of Brock Modem is the freedom that Brock Modem has 
in this Cougar offense. Sam Dower going to work on the block, called for too many steps, and a Gonzaga turnover. And this is a great start for Washington State, the penetration. Dower just bluffs a little bit too much. He didn't need the hedge. You have to know that you're guarding Brock Modem, even though he hasn't shot it well this season, more than capable from knocking it down from deep. Before that made three, Modem just four of 22 from downtown so far this season. Ball stripped and stolen by Elias Harris. Here come the Zags. Kevin Pangos runs it down in the corner for the Bulldogs. One thing to watch that I saw in the first possession, especially when Woolridge was guarding Guy Landrietti. Guy Landrietti, not a great perimeter shooter. Doesn't shoot a lot of threes. They're laying off him, sagging on these big bodies in the post. Foul against Washington State on the perimeter. D.J. Shelton called for his first. And the first against the Cougars. And I like this matchup that Ken Bone put Kernick Drew, the long, lanky, lanky athlete guarding Kevin Pangos, trying to frustrate him with size. Here's Elias Harris missing the three. Rebound, Mike Ladd, Washington State. Royce Woolrich has the ball stripped by Pangos, and the Zags come away with it. Gary Bell Jr. hits the three, and we're tied at three. Gary Bell Jr. from Kent, Washington, Kent Ridge High School. 13th three-pointer on the season. Great catch and shoot. Strong physical guard for the Zags. Rock Bodum inside. It drops in. Just had enough to climb over the front edge of the rim there. When watching tape on Brock Modem and the Cougars this week, Modem is one of the best in the country at just making basket cuts. There, the hard cut freed him up and able to get himself open for the layup. Here's Kevin Pangas into the key. Has the ball stripped, stolen by the Cougars. Dexter Koenig drew the sophomore from Melbourne, Australia, brings it across. Transfer from Fresno State, gets it inside, finds another transfer. The Kansas transfer, Royce Woolridge, puts the Cougars up 7-3. Great start for Washington State. Here's Gary Bell Jr. to the key. Kick out, Guy Landry Eddy on the drive. Too strong, rebound, Dexter, Koenig, Drew, and Wazoo. Ken Bone. The Cougar crowd couldn't be happier right now because with this hot start, it's gotten this biggest crowd of the year energized and into the game early. Elias Harris rips it away. The Zags attack, and it's Gary Bell Jr. in transition. And that's really where Gonzaga is at their best. 85 points a game on the season. Fifth in the nation in scoring. So fifth in scoring in the top field goal shooting team in the land, Gonzaga at 53.3% collectively on the season. Woolridge at three. Deflected out by Washington State. It will go to Gonzaga. Good start for the Cougs. The hometown team in front of a large crowd. Here at Beasley Coliseum, up a bucket on the Zags. Good start for Washington State. They lead 10th rank Gonzaga 7-5. Miles take us inside the play. Well, Roxy, they ran a nice set here. It's called a horn set. It's where you put both big guys, the four and the five man, towards the top of the key. And the point guard in this situation, Mike Ladd, has the option to go off either way. Now as we run the play, we freeze it here. Kevin Pangos, who's underneath this State Farm sign, gets caught ball watching. And Royce Woolridge makes a great read on the back door. When your guy loses vision of yourself, back cut him, get the easy lay in. Perfect execution by the Cougars on the horn set. So the Cougars executing it, leading it by a bucket over Gonzaga. And Washington State comes in at 5-3. and three. The Zags are 8-0. Oh. This is a tremendous barometer for Washington State. This game tonight to go up against their rival from 75 miles up the highway. As Ken Bone in his fourth year in Washington State as the head coach. 21st season overall for Ken Bone as a head coach. Stoppage of play is Mike Seifer's lead official work with Michael Greenstein and Tommy Nunez here halting play momentarily. But Ken Bones had to do it a lot. 
a couple of weeks before the season started. He dismissed his senior starting point guard and Reggie Moore for the ball club and has had to move forward without that leadership in the backcourt. And, and Reggie Moore, you remember his freshman year, he was off the charts good in this league. He averaged 13 points a game as a freshman, had some injury problems, and then obviously now the violation of team rules, he gets dismissed. And, and we talked to Ken Bone about it today. It's point guard by committee, minute by minute with this team. And there's Elias Harris, one of the best players in college basketball, been the most, one of the most consistent players for the Zags over the past, now going on to his fourth season. Two-time all-first team WCC member, and now an offensive foul on Washington State and the Cougar turnover. Well, I love the patience in the post by Harris here. He faces up, sees what he has, gets the back down, Good footwork, the little step through, and the beautiful finish. Someone's going to need to come over and help that and cut off the middle on those post-ups. The offensive foul called against Brock Moda. Second team foul on Washington State. As Kelly Olenek has checked in for the Zags. Seven-foot junior from Kamloops, British Columbia. Also David Stockton, the junior from Spokane. And the Zags have one of the deepest and maybe best front courts in the country. Legitimate four post players that can all score, rebound, good athletes, and great size down low. Ken Bone saying he doesn't know a foursome in the country. That's like maybe teams have two or three guys, but not four. And look at Elias Harris, the all WCC performer, getting it done on the defensive end with the steal and the jam, energizing this Bulldog team. Eight straight points for Gonzaga. They lead it by four. Off the screen, here's Mike Ladd. And this is where Gonzaga has gotten better and where people talk about this being one of Mark Hughes' best teams on the defensive end. They're getting it done. They have a, a team that's committed to getting stops. Mike Ladd hits the three for the Cougars to pull Wazoo within one. Elias Harris missing the three and the rebound. Dexter Kernick drew as the Cougars look to reclaim the lead. DJ Shelton, way long on the three. And it's cleared by Kevin Pangas. Here come the Zags. David Stockton in transition. Ball stripped. DJ Shelton the steal. Ahead for Kernick Drew. He glides in and rolls it in off the front edge of the rim. Washington State goes back in front. What a nice look ahead by DJ Shelton, the big fella. Just taking the one or two dribbles, not trying to do too much. Delivering that pass on the money in stride to Kernick Drew. After eight straight points for Gonzaga, the Cougars have scored the last five. That pass hits the rim looking for Kelly Olenek, and Washington State comes away with it. And Olenek was open on that roll from the side pick and roll action with the throw ahead. They need to get Modem a touch, whether it's in the post on the perimeter. I think he can take Olenek to the outside. And a foul on the perimeter called against Gonzaga. And it's going against Kevin Pangos, his first. Been a little bit of sloppy play on both ends there. You see Ladd, who's not a natural point guard, making the weak pass, and Elias Harris makes him pay. And then Stockton can't deliver the pass out of the range of Gary Bell, who was circling behind. Leads to a transition bucket for the Cougars. Devontae Lacey has come in for Washington State, the 6'3 sophomore from Tacoma, who's missed the last four games with a left knee injury. And also in for the Cougars, Will DiOrio, a 6'5 junior from Bainbridge Island, Washington. Lacey's a guy that can really use his physicality, his size. He's a good scorer, eight and a half points a game through the four games that he played. Offensive rebound, Mike Ladd inside. Will DiOrio is fouled, the shot spins out. He'll shoot a pair at this round. And the Washington State foul shooter will be Will DiOrio. He's five of six from the line. This year. Well, he's a guy who really brings a lot of experience, toughness to this team. Made 30 starts last year as a freshman. But when he hurt his knee two weeks ago against Kansas, he's only had one practice and was really limited in that practice. So look for fatigue to be a factor for Lacey, especially early. When you're trying to get your win back, trying to play really hard, the adrenaline's, the adrenaline's pumping. But Ken Bone will have to do a good job of managing his minutes tonight. Will DiOrio rattles in 
The second, he hits both. And it's Washington State by three. Last foul against Gonzaga's Kyle Dranginis. David Stockton out there with Kevin Pangos, Dranginis. Kelly Olenek, and also in for the first time is Shimik Karnowski, the 7-1 freshman from Poland, the two seven-footers on the floor when the Zags commit an offensive foul. David Stockton called for his first, third on the Bulldogs, as Washington State has scored seven straight. And you mentioned the two seven-footers, and they are legit seven feet, and they are some big dudes. Karnowski came in at 305 pounds. He's trimmed 15 pounds since he's gotten to Spokane down to 290, where he says he feels lighter and quicker. And Kernick grew, showing some lightning quick speed as he's able to turn the corner and get to the rim and finish. Largest lead for the Cougars have scored nine straight. And now a steal. Long pass ahead. Will DiOrio, perimeter jumper. And the rebound cleared by Shimon Karnowski and Gonzaga. I think DiOrio was surprised by how open he was. And he doesn't shoot very much, but he had a wide open layup, Roxy. And a foul off the ball and a push against Washington State. Will DiOrio. Mark Few and the Zags Miles trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Washington State. And Dexter Kernan Drew, he's been getting it going, lighting it up here in the Palouse, slashing to the basket, Washington State up five early. Washington State Cougars stunning 10th ring Gonzaga here in the first half in the Palouse. Thursday night on ESPNU, the Commodores take on freshman sensation, Samaje Kristen and the Musketeers. Vanderbilt versus Xavier Thursday at 7.30 on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Let's flash back to a year ago in the first game in the tip-off marathon from a year ago was this matchup <laughs> up at the kennel in Spokane. His first career start, nine threes, 33 points. Kevin Pangos put himself on the national scene right away. He's a young man that I had seen three years ago in the 2010 Jordan Brand International Classic. I knew of some of his skills. They were calling him a younger version of Steve Nash. We don't know if he'll ever get to that level, but Kevin Pangos, definitely worth the price of admission. Well, with that comparison, Miles, do you see that he could be headed down that path of Steve Nash? I, I think it's hard to compare the two right now, and I don't really like to compare players that much. Pangos is his own guy. I didn't see Nash play that much in college, but Kevin Pangos, a great catch and shoot guy. He's put on a good weight, but Steve Nash is his idol, and he said he learned a ton from him at the Canadian national team training camp this summer for five, for five days, where he was just watching him do drills, talking to, talking to him, and observing as much knowledge as possible. Kevin Pangos left it short, Brock Moden clears. Here comes Washington State, and Mike Glad will slow it up and get it into the half-court offense here. But like Pangos, Steve Nash played in the WCC down at Santa Clara. The legendary figure down there in Dick Davis. And 2-3 zone for the first time by Gonzaga. Here's Brock Bodum from the corner. And Kelly Olenek called for a foul, trying to wrestle for it with Will DiOrio of Washington State. I like the hustle there by Will DiOrio. He's known for his toughness. He's a rebounder, a defender, doesn't do much on the offensive end. But there, DiOrio at 6'5", battling the seven-footer, Kelly Olenek, and winning the war, keeping the ball alive for the Cougars. Mark Field going to his bench, bringing back Gary Bell Jr. and Elias Harris. And his own look off the inbound. Cougars by five, their largest lead. They've scored nine straight. From the corner, Devontae Lacey. 12 in a row for Washington State. The Cougs are up eight. And a whistle off the ball. And a foul inside, the second on Will DiOrio. And that's really got to be a good feeling for Devontae Lacey to come out, knock down his first shot, especially from three-point land. When you haven't played a game, look at the ball reversal. They make the zone shift. Elias Harris just laid on the closeout because he had to go from the middle of the lane. Excellent job of spacing and ball movement by the Cougars. 12 in a row for Washington State. And Elias Harris silences the run. Elias Harris is just an elite level player. 
He's been the model of consistency for the Zags program, averaging between 12 and 15 points in his fourth year career. He has six already tonight. David Stockton applying pressure. Zags only gave it two possessions in the zone. Now they go back to their strong point, the man-to-man. -man. Here's Royce Woolridge, long on a three. Kept alive on the offensive end, Devontae Lacey. Missing from the corner, and skying for the rebound, Gary Bell Jr. Here comes Gonzaga. No good, tipped up, and it's cleared by D.J. Shelton in Washington State. And you see Washington State, they had a chance to fast break right there, but they're more content to play in the half court, try to keep this game in the low to mid-60s. Gonzaga wants to get that game up into the high 70s and 80s. Here's Devontae Lacey, a kick out. DJ Shelton, knocked off balance, will go to the foul line. Gonzaga foul against Szymik Karnowski, his first. A 7-1 freshman from Poland. That is the fifth Gonzaga team. It's DJ Shelton, a 58% foul shooter to the free throw line. Coach Bond is really complimentary of DJ Shelton. He's a young man that came in here wanting to maybe be a star, but this year has really settled into his role, playing hard, being an excellent defender, rebounding, getting the hustle points, and then just kind of letting the offense come to him. A lot of star power, though, in his family. His uncle Lonnie played at Oregon State in 10 years in the NBA. His cousin LJ is standing offensive lineman of the college ranks in the Cleveland of the NFL. As Gary Bell Jr. is getting attended to on the Gonzaga bench. Looks like he lost a contact line. He's an athletic trainer for the Zags. Paying close attention to Gary Bell Jr. over there is DJ Shelton getting some last minute instruction for this free throw from Ken Bone. But a bunch of his cousins also, Miles, played college ball. His cousin Tim played for Steve Fisher down at San Diego State. Marlon Shelton across state at the University of Washington. And then Titus played at Cal State full, but Shelton misses both. Cougars by six. Elias Harris attacks. Counted in one for Elias Harris. Foul against Royce Woolridge is first. Roxy, there's not too many power forwards in the country that can do what Elias Harris just did. Defensive rebound on one end, skies up, gets it, examines. The guards know that he can handle. No one back there to call for the ball. In and out dribble, goes to his weak hand, absorbs the contact, going to the line to finish the three-point play where he can't convert. Short on the free throw, Devontae Lacey clears for the Cougars. Approaching nine minutes remaining until halftime. Washington State has led by as many as eight. Inside, Lacey to the goal, and one, Devontae Lacey. Second foul on Kevin Pangos. Correction, first foul on Pangos. Sixth against Gonzaga. Free throw missed. Cleared by Gary Bell Jr. Shot clock at 15. Kyle Dren Guinness over to Gary Bell Jr. Missing the three. And over the back goes Elias Harris. His first. That is the seventh team foul against Gonzaga. I love the energy and the effort that the Cougars have come out with tonight. They're matching the intensity of the Zags. They're blocking out. They're physical. They're rebounding on both ends of the floor. That was the seventh team foul against the Zags. Here's Koenig Drew. Washington State in the bonus for the remainder of this first half. Brock Bodum on the drive. Tough 
floater by Brock Voda. He's so versatile. He flares off the pick, and the way, because he can shoot the three ball, has to be a hard, long closeout. Modem, one dribble, beautiful runner. Modem has seven. The Washington State Cougars have equaled their largest lead at eight. Beautiful pass inside, the throwdown by Elias Harris. Roxy, you see that vision? Throws it behind the defender on the money to Elias Harris waiting for the finish. Great job by Pangos on the penetration and drop off. Already 10 points for Elias Harris. Mike Ladd on the drive, it's foul. And the foul against Guy Landrietti. Brock Modem has the Washington Cougars up by six. The little head fake and the runner avoids the charge. Cougars up in the first half. Washington State Cougars out in front of number 10, Gonzaga, 23-17. ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader Sunday at four. The Black Bears take on Michael Snare and the Knowles. Then at six, the running Rebels square off with the Golden Bears. Maine, Florida State at four. Then UNLV Cal at six Sunday on ESPNU. Take us inside the point. And Roxy, we see Brock Modem highlighted here at the high post. You watch this set, four out, one in around the high post. Get a little high post rub by Devontae Lacey. First, a nice hard basket cut there by Woolridge. And then we freeze it right there. Pangos gets caught. Elias Harris, no help on the curl. Beautiful read by Devontae Lacey. Nice pass and finish. Again, excellent execution by the Washington State Cougars. Washington State shooting at 53% from the field to start this one. But maybe the more impressive number, Miles, for the Cougars, they're out rebounding Gonzaga by five. And Gonzaga comes in, and their rebound margin on the season, plus 12 and a half per game. And yeah. Washington State right now is owning the glass. Well, they, they've come out wanting it, I think, a little bit more than the Zags. You've seen them keep balls alive on the offensive end. They've done a great job of screening out on the defensive end, limiting the Zags to one shot and only one offensive rebound. One and one, the front end missed by Mike Ladd. And it's cleared by Gonzaga. But those missed one and one opportunities, that's like going 0 for 2 from the line, Roxy. Going into that shot, they were 2 for 5, but they've missed two front ends of 1 and 1. Harry Bell Jr. on the drive, kick out. Here's Elias Harris. Isolated with Moda. Takes him off the dribble. Fade away shot. Offensive rebound. Key Landry Eddy is fouled on a putback. He'll go to the free throw line. And the Cougar foul against Dexter Koenig Drew. His first. And six now on Washington State. And Guy Landrietti, a 69% free throw shooter, will shoot a pair here for the Bulldogs. Guy Landrietti in double figures in each of the first two games this year. But none of the last six, averaging just under eight points a game, hits the first free throw. Young man that grew up in, in Paris, France. Went to Midland College, actually won a junior college national championship. This is the second cleared by Koenig Drew. Cougars with the ball and a five-point lead. And here goes some of that high post rub. Koenig Drew on the curl there. And now watch the dribble handoff series. The big question here is, can Washington State sustain this for 40 minutes, this effort against a team like Gonzaga? Brock Modem, missing. And Dean Landrietti losing the rebound out of bounds. It'll go right back to the Cougars. I don't think you're going to have to worry about the energy and the effort. It's, it's do they have the horses to keep up with Gonzaga. You know the Cougars, the, the crowd is going to keep them in the game. They're going to keep playing hard and battling. But Gonzaga a little bit deeper a little bit more talented than the Cougars. Dante Lacey back in the game. Three from the corner. Mike Ladd missing. And the rebound cleared by the Zags and Sam Dower. Ahead for Elias Harris and Gonzaga throws it away. Tango thought Bell was going to cut to the basket on that, and he tried to lead him right for the layup. Bell was running to the three-point line. There's some full-court pressure from Gonzaga. Washington 
State coming in here having won three straight, five and three now on the year, and a perfect five and zero oh here at home. Kernick Drew for three. Loose ball, last touch by Gary Bell Jr. They say it goes to Washington State. Cougars just seem to be quicker to the basketball tonight, making that first step, that first attempt to get to it on every shot, every loose ball. Here's Mike Ladd, senior from Seattle, a transfer from Fresno State. Motive. Spins into the key, off balance, left it short. Here comes Gary Bell Jr. The Zags look to count. Pang goes for three. Rattles out. And the long rebound to Mike Ladd of Washington State. First clean look that he's had from the three-point line. That was all the way down and popped out. Here comes Mulder. Missed the runner. And the rebound, Sam Dower. Eli Andrietti will slow it up one on two. Here's Harris. Gary Bell Jr. for three. Excellent inside out action. Dower goes high low to Harris. Harris sees he doesn't have anything. Too much help by the Cougars. Unselfish play by Harris to the kick out to Gary Bell Jr. 32nd timeout, Washington State. The Zags have pulled within two. Gonzaga does a great job of sharing the ball. They have no egos on this team. They don't care who scores the points. It's all about getting the W. Ladd with just too much help there. You can't go that deep in the post without knowing that your teammates are going to rotate over. Can't get back to Bell as he relocates. Excellent job by the Zags. ESPN College Basketball is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the Watch ESPN app. And Roxy, I don't know about you, but that may be one of the best apps that's ever been invented. Oh, because as much traveling as we do, it allows me to really catch up on games, see teams that I haven't seen, because it's all there in the files at the touch of a button. On your iPad, your iPhone, everything. 23-21, Washington State leading Gonzaga. Ten each for Gary Bell Jr. and Elias Harris. For Gonzaga, the only other point has been scored by Gil Andrietti. That's it for the score for the Bulldogs. They've had six different leading scorers in their eight games so far this season. Here is a tough three and a challenge three. Well, short for Devontae Lacey. Harris probably got a piece of it. Loose ball. And a travel is called against Mike Hart, who tried to come away from the pack with possession of the ball. I don't like the Cougars' last couple of possessions. Been deep three-point shots, contested. They don't need it. Their best actions when they've been moving the basketball. And here's just two teams scrapping. Mark Few felt that a foul was committed, but you see the little hop step by Mike Hart for the travel call. DJ Shelton up and under move. Oh, pretty move by D.J. Shelton of Washington State. His first points. Cougars by four. Pangos the entry pass to Kelly Olenek. And a late travel call for Mike Cyphers and a Gonzaga turnover. Kelly Olenek, they're frustrated walking back to the Roxy. As good as the Zags have been, this is their first true road game of the year. They're coming into a hostile atmosphere, in-state rival, big game. They're number 10 in the country. Washington State's biggest game of the year to date. So this was a question mark for Mark Few. Was, is this team going to play with some poise? They look a little bit rattled right now. Here's Devontae Lacey. Look, you played at a very high level. You also coached at a high level. That first road game, how nerve-wracking was it for you as a coach? as it's blocked out of bounds by Kelly Olenek that stays with Washington State. I'll finish the thought when I get week back on the other side, but Washington State by four over the Zags. DJ Shelton just going to work on the all-conference. Elias Harris gives him the up and under, kisses it off the glass. Washington State up by four.
Boy, a raucous, great environment in the Palouse tonight for number 10, Gonzaga and Washington State. As the Cougars are up on the Zags by four here late in the first half, along with Miles Simon, Roxy Burns with you. Before I was asking you about the first road game, that's what Gonzaga is dealing with tonight. Their first road contest, what is that first road game like for a team? Well, it's tough because uh, as a coach, when I was at Arizona, I didn't know what to expect from my guys uh, coming in to a tough atmosphere, a hostile environment against an in-state, This, in this case, an in-state rival. We just hope they come out and play with boys. Don't let the crowd get into it. Stay focused as a team because essentially it's just you against 10,000 others. The Zags do have a section of people here, but way at the top <laughs> of Beasley Coliseum. Of course, of course. And the Zag faithful has made the trek down from Spokane. About an hour, 15, 20 minutes away. Royce Woolridge in the key off balance runner. And the rebound player, Gary Bell Jr., has had a very good first half for Gonzaga. <laughs> Kelly Olenek. Long on a three, and it pops over the top of the backboard out of bounds to Washington State. And Gonzaga's scoring tonight. It's basically been two guys. It's been Gary Bell Jr. and Elias Harris, each of them with ten points. Well, one thing that Washington State has done, they put Des Dexter Koenig through on Kevin Pangos, and that's really limited his touches and what he's been able to do on the offensive end. Turning to it, 6-6, the lanky sophomore. And the 6-2 guard for Gonzaga and Pangos. Elias Harris spinning to the basket, fouled by Junior Longris, the freshman from Oakland, California, of Washington State. And two free throws for Gonzaga going to the line. It'll be Elias Harris. Junior Longer is part of a great high school team before Brandon Ashley, the Arizona Wildcat, left the Bay Area and went to the Midland Prep in Las Vegas. It was Brandon Ashley and Junior Longer is teaming together for Bishop O'Dowd in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. Elias Harris now 0-2 at the line. Rock going him back on the floor for Washington State. 18 fouls on Gonzaga, seven against Washington State, one out of two for Harris, and the Zags within three. DJ Shelton trying to go coast to coast, runs over Kelly Olenek in a charge, the second personal foul on DJ Shelton of Washington State. Roxy, you could see that coming from half court. Shelton's eyes just got big because he saw an open lane, but this is what Gonzaga wanted. They wanted to bait the big fella into handling the ball and trying to make a play, which he's a little bit uncomfortable doing. Great job by Olenek to slide over and sacrifice his body and take the charge. Yeah, heading play by the fourth-year junior, Olenek, who redshirted last year for Gonzaga. From a walk-on, Mike Hart. Elias Harris. Pangos, three, we're tied. And then tumbling to the deck after the play, Olenek and Brock Modem are tangled up. And they're exchanging some words, heading back up the floor. Michael Greenstein having a step in the middle. And you don't think this game means a lot? These guys are going at it. They were battling in the post the whole possession. It's a phys physical play down there by 6'10", Brock Modem and 7'0". Kelly Olenek. Look at the pass by Harris. That's the second time Harris has made a kick out to a wide open three point shooter. One time off the post up, another time off the penetration, showing his versatility as a power forward. Report pressure from Gonzaga. Broken by Washington State. Lacey missing a three. Loose ball. Moto comes away with it. Back to his feet, and he's called for a travel. And Moden threw the ball in the limit, and that's the right call. And a technical foul on Brock Modem. It's also a personal. Modem's second personal foul with 210 left in the half. Modem frustrated by the play before. Let it carry on to this play and the traveling call. You have to control your emotions, especially if you're Brock Modem in this situation. You're the leader, the most experienced player the best player on this Cougar team. 
Kevin Pang has to shoot the team. Marries the first, and Gonzaga leads. Here you see, he stands up. That's the travel call. And then he throws the ball right out of Linick, who had just got, a, got in a scuffle with. Just lay the ball down, go back on defense. This is a, could be a real momentum builder late in this half now for the Zags. And it's also the second personal foul on Modem as a technical is also a personal foul. And, and if I'm Gonzaga, I go inside to Olenek right now because the refs aren't going to let this get out of control and they're going to call a touch foul possibly on this possession. So you try to go at Modem to get his third before the half. It's Pangas short in the three. And kept alive by Mike Hart. Got to go inside. The referees are on whistle alert right now. Please Harris, kick out. Here's Pangas, an open three from the corner. Short in the rebound, Washington State, and Royce Woolridge. Got a good look. Final 95 seconds of this opening half. Washington State leads by one. Evan Pangos a kick out. Here's Olenek from the elbow. Rattles out, rebound Mike Ladd and the Cougars. It got physical. Referees were going to be on whistle alert. Three straight jumpers by the Zags. Nothing in the paint. Here's Modem again for three. Short. Junior Longris the offensive rebound. And a foul against Gonzaga with 37 seconds remaining in the half. Let me ask you this. 37 seconds left in the half. Gonzaga can play for the last, last shot of the half. Brock Modem has two fouls. If you're Ken Bone, do you look to get him off the floor so there's no way he can get that third foul? Before yeah, you don't, wanna, you don't want to take that chance. He may become with Longris. They're going to come, it looks like, with the freshman, Brett Bass. And I would think he would come in for Moda in this situation. Junior Longris hits the first. He'll get the bonus. The back end of the one and one, and there it is. And that's excellent coaching by Ken Bone. So Moda goes to the bench with 10 points and his two personal fouls with 37 seconds remaining in the half. I like how he was able to answer with the three-point shot after the technical foul. Mark Few elects to use his use it or lose it 30 second timeout. They were 32.6 left in the half, 31 on the shot clock, so Gonzaga can play for the final shot of the half, but take us back inside the play at Brock Motor. As we take a look here, Roxy, Brock Modem, he's the key to this whole thing for the Cougars. Again, they place him at the high post, surround him with four players, and now as we let it ride, cut off the post, going to be another cut off the post, a little clearl, but he sets the flare screen this time. Excellent play by Mike Ladd to sacrifice himself for the shooter, Brock Modem. Gonzaga not ready for it. Brock Modem, great catch and shoot. 29-27. Washington State lead coming up at the half. Some scores around the country. How about six-ranked Florida going on the road? Rivalry game bearing the Knowles in Tallahassee. They, they look fabulous. I mean, they have it going defensively. Kenny Boynton, Murphy, Patrick Young, Mike Rosario, Scotty Wilbekin. I could go on about that team. They've been the back-to-back -back Elite Eights, a, a core group of those four guys, back-to-back -back Elite Eights. Their team, that's a serious Final Four and National Championship contender. I'll see them in about 10 days in a top 10 matchup with the Arizona Wildcats in Tucson. That's going to be an awesome game in the KL Center. Here's Kelly Olenek. And this is just a little false motion until they get what they want here in the last about eight seconds they should go. That is second and a half differential for the Zags. Pangas guarded tightly by Koenig Drew. Elias Harris shuffle the feet and a travel with five seconds remaining until halftime. Roxy, and I don't think I can emphasize enough the defense that Koenig Drew has played on Kevin Pangos. His length, his athleticism has really frustrated Pangos and made every catch tough 
for Pangos. I would like to see Brock Modem come back in the game here with five seconds, a little offense for defense substitution. That was a tenth Gonzaga turnover. Devontae Lacey spins, loses control, picked up by Ladd. It goes in! Well, you talk about a lucky bounce for Washington State. There were two of them right there but for the Cougars. But you know what, Roxy? I believe when you play hard, you play with energy, and you play with positivity, good things are going to happen for you. And here, Devontae Lacey a little out of control, but the Cougs have had a great first half. Ladd picks up, picks up the trash and knocks in a little floater to give him a four-point lead at the break. Washington State leading by as many as eight in this first half. Go to the locker room with that big momentum boost from Mike Ladd and have a four-point lead on Gonzaga. So the Zags and the Cougars going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This rivalry up in the Palouse and through one half a play. Washington State stunning 10th rank Gonzaga. The Cougars up four at the break. Getting ready for the start of the second half at Beasley Coliseum where Washington State leads 10th rank Gonzaga. 31-27 here at the break. Along with Miles Simon, Roxy Bernstein with you. And the Zags came in undefeated, Miles, looking for their first 9-0 start in school history. Yet they're down four at the half. How surprised are you by what we've seen here in the first 20 minutes? I'm not surprised by what I've seen from Washington State because when you got the 10th ranked team in the country coming into your house, you better be ready to play and show up. And they have more surprised by the Zags getting beat to loose balls, 10 turnovers, just, just the overall sloppiness by Gonzaga in the first half. Well, let's revisit our one-on-one -on -one from before the ball game and the things you were looking for tonight. Well, we knew the Zags are one of the deepest teams in the country. They got a lot of guys that can put the ball in the hoop. Six guys have led them in scoring in their first eight games. Brock Modem has ultimately been a, a one-man show, 18 points a game. But look how it's turned out. Harrison Bell, 21 of the 27 points. Only one other guy has made a field goal for Gonzaga. And Washington State has had great balance. Eight different guys have scored, and then Brock Modem has been that guy leading the charge in the first half, getting him the lead. You see him at the high post area, the four out, one in. Here he's going to receive a great layer screen. Elias Harris falls asleep. Brock Modem with the quick release. Beautiful three-point shot. Then they run essentially the same play. He pump fakes Dower, a little head fake. Nice teardrop, great runner. Inside and out game by the Australian. Great ball reversal by the Cougs, who's been sharing it tremendously well in the first half. And that's why they have the four-point lead on the number 10 team in the country. Gonzaga came in the number one field goal shooting team in the country, better than 53%, 42% in the first half. And the rebounding number is the big story, as Gonzaga coming in at plus 12 and a half per game on the glass, but Washington State out-rebounding Gonzaga in the first half, 21-16. Four point lead for Washington State. And Mark Few adjusting his lineup and tweaking it with Kelly Olinick starting in the second half up front with Elias Harris. Mike Hart gets the nod for Gonzaga here in the second half with Kevin Pangos and Gary Bell Jr. So a shakeup for the Bulldogs. Well, I think the one thing you see if you're bringing Mike Hart in the game. You want a defender, a guy who's going to get loose balls, who's going to rebound and play his butt off on the defensive end. Clock did not start, so we'll have to re-enter the ball here to begin the second half of play. Same starting five that began the game for Ken Bowen in Washington State with Mike Ladd, Royce Woolridge, Dexter Koenig Drew, DJ Shelton, and Brock Modem for the Cougars. Washington State led by as many as eight points in the first half. DJ Shelton thought about the three. Looking for Bowden, stolen. Kelly Olenek ahead for Elias Harris. One on one with Kernick Drew. Gets bumped, count the basket, and one. Elias Harris in a foul line as he was hacked in the end. Well, it started with Olenek on the defensive end. He was quick on that pick and pop rotation to steal that basketball. He finds Harris right away in transition. Woolridge just premeditated what he was going to do. And then look at the nice little Euro step. <laughs> Elias Harris 
showing that versatility and agility to make that play. Harris gets the free throw, now two of four at the line. He has 14 points to lead all scorers, and Gonzaga immediately within one. Here is DJ Shelton, pressured by Harris. Royce Woolridge on the drive. Shot no good, a blocking foul though called against Kevin Pangos of Gonzaga. His second, and at the foul line, it'll be Washington State and Royce Woolridge shooting a pair. And Roxy, we talked about in the first half, Washington State not having a true point guard really on, on the roster. Reggie, Reggie Moore dismissed in late September, two, two or three weeks before practice starts. They're doing it by committee, but yet they only turned the ball over eight times, and Gonzaga, the team that's supposed to have the steady hand in the backcourt, 10 turnovers in the first half. Just too much sloppiness, not enough care of the ball by the Bulldogs. If Washington State does not have a true point guard, should Gonzaga be pressuring them more? Well, th that's what they've been doing. They've been picking up in the press, trying to speed the game up. As you see, they made Shelton handle the ball in the last possession, but he did a more than capable job of getting it across half court as Olenek, the seven-footer, able to go off the bounce from the foul line all the way to the rim. Pretty move by Olenek to tie the game. Taken away by Kelly Olenek. Here comes Gonzaga. Kevin Pangas drives. Fouled by Kernick Drew. Shot no good. A couple of free throws for Kevin Pangas. And the third personal foul on Dexter Kernick Drew of Washington State. And look, they ISO. They try to go high low. He sees the open driving lane to the left. Kelly Olenek at seven feet. Doing it now on both ends. Mike Hart actually gets his hands on that basketball, leading to this break opportunity. Kevin Pangos initiating the contact body to body against Kernick Drew. Kevin Pangos now three of three at the line, and Washington State has surrendered the lead. And you'll see after this make more pressure from the Zags, they're going to want to make DJ Shelton bring that ball up the floor for Washington State. Short on the second. Elias Harris tries to keep it alive. And the Cougars come away with it. Royce Woolridge attacks a lane. Runner in the key. That was smooth right there. Olenek was in position to take the charge, but a beautiful sidestep by Woolridge. Cougars by one. Gonzaga by one. Elias Harris with 16. How good was that in the post? He feels the body contact and the quick spin drop step. Charge, offensive foul. Mike Ladd called for the offensive foul as Mike Hart drew it for Gonzaga. And Elias Harris has just taken over this game early here in the second half, involved on both ends. He feels that hand contact, slips off and spins down low. And Roxy, why did I say Mike Hart was getting the start in the second half? For defensive purposes, he's gotten a steal and now taking a charge here in the first two minutes. And Mike Hart losing his shoe in the process, draws the offensive foul, the Zags have the ball, and a one-point lead. After trailing by four and a half, Ted Rankin Zaga now leads Washington State 35-34. Busy summer for Washington State. Miles, they went down under. They went to Australia on a tour for about two weeks. One of the most beautiful places in all the world, Roxy. I got a chance in 1997 after we won the national championship. Lute Olsen took us down there. You see some great pictures, great bonding experience for this Washington State team to see some unique animals that they're not going to get to see in their everyday life. Got to play five games down there, really grow as a team, have three players on this team, Modem, Koenig Drew, and James Hunter, all from Australia. But Lute Olsen took us down there 23 days. We played nine 23 days. 23 days. 23 days in Australia. Oh, man. It was a little bit too long. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit too long. But it was meant for our, we had a young team that year to bond and grow. Our time was supposed to be 97-98 when we had a senior loaded team and an upperclassman team. We just happened to win the title a year earlier. But for these programs to do that, it's just a life-altering, life-learning experience to go to, uh, go see another place and another culture. I want 23 days in Australia. <laughs> Here's Elias Harris, missing everything. Pulled out by Dexter Kernick Drew. Now Washington State looks to reclaim the lead. Royce Woolridge. 
Turning through, has it stripped, it's loose, and they're getting a foul against Mike Hart diving for the loose ball. His first personal foul. And it's the second team foul on Gonzaga here in the second half. Hart is one of those just ultimate glue guys. You don't ever want to play for him, but you know he's on the floor whenever he's out there. He's dive, he's dope for a loose ball, he's taking a charge. He's gotten a steal all within the first two minutes and 30 seconds of the second half. Is that what Mark T was looking for when he put him in to start the second half? Look at that, look at the rotation. He comes from the other side of the floor to prevent Brock Moulton from getting a shot off there. He's just the most active player on this Bulldog team and really provides a spark. Here's Brock Modem into the key. Off balance floater, a tough shot from Modem. And the Cougs seesaw in front. And you hit it right on the head. That's a tough shot. A left handed player going to his right, bringing it back to his left hand for the shot. Illegal screen, offensive foul. Elias Harris, his second. And you don't want to give up middle drive. And Elias Harris just opens the door, but that is not an easy shot for a 6'10 player to come across the lane, going to his right, then bringing it back to his strong hand. And with the seven-footer, Olenek right there to try to challenge the shot. Full court pressure from Gonzaga. Will Diorio in the game for Washington State. Breaks the pressure, attacks. And an offensive foul. The second charge drawn by Mike Hart here already in the second half. And Will Diorio out of control and called for his third. That's exactly what Mark Few is looking for from the press. Mike Hart there in plenty of time, takes it right to his chest. Easy call to make. They are going to let the four man, in this case, Diorio, bring the ball and make a play. That is what Mark Few is trying to bait the Cougars into, and it's worked twice already this game. Pass and crash right there. Kelly Olenek inside, looking for Hart. Turned over by Gonzaga. And thrown away too high from Devontae Lacey, who again is just returning for Ken Bone in Washington State after missing the last four games. He injured his knee when the Cougs were blown out by Kansas in Kansas City back on November 19th. Roxy, I didn't like the last possession by, by the Zags. Oh, there's only one pass, and you have the seven-footer Olenek driving. You've got to make the defense shift a little bit. Here's Olenek missing. Gets his own miss. The putback by Kelly Olenek. Olenek, who redshirted last year, really benefited from that redshirt season. A lot of bigs on the roster. Robert Sacre was going to play a majority of the minutes at the five, but he's finishing better around the rim, got stronger, and in better shape this season. Kernick Drew hits the side of the backboard with the three. And Gonzaga takes control. Mike Hart. Larry Bell Jr. Drives. Inside. Olenek lays it in. Nice play. Good patience. Bell Jr. has been doing with his scoring in the first half. There with the beautiful drop-off assist. Olenek kept that ball high for the quick, quick land. And Olenek with six all in the second half. Out of bounds to Washington State. Gary Bell, the Kent Washington native, making things happen for the Zags here in the second half. Beautiful drop off and finish. Zags up three. Some young Gonzaga fans enjoying the Zags start to the second half here in Pullman. There's a house divided though. 39-36 Gonzaga leading. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wouldn't Watch. Brought to you by Wendy's and Elias Harris for Gonzaga, Brock Mona for Washington State. Miles, you spent a lot of time on Elias Harris this past summer. Yeah, I spent time with the, the Nike Skills Academies, the LeBron James Skills Academies, working with the college guys. And Elias Harris was at that camp going against the top college players in the country. Mason Plumley, Doug McDermott, Flip Pressy, Isaiah Cannon, CJ Leslie, the list goes on. Mike Moser, and he was arguably one of the best players at the camp all week long, doing it inside and out. People loved his work ethic. The NBA scouts really raved about him. They, the only concern about him is that, is he a tweener at the next level? But I think you see tonight the versatility. He can put the ball on the floor. He can shoot threes. Been one of the most consistent players in Zach basketball history. Shot clock at 12. Mike Ladd 
Over to Koenig Drew. Short from three. Kelly Olenek runs it down for Gonzaga. Here comes Kevin Pengus in the open floor. In the seven-footer, Olenek into the key. And he gets the bucket. And the largest lead of the ball game, Gonzaga by five. Inside 15 minutes to play. And you don't see too many teams giving it to their seven foot five man at the three point line. But Olenek skilled enough, maybe got away with the charge. There was some contact, modem was set. They let it go as a play on, but Olenek with the soft touch from six feet. Turnover on Washington State. The Zags six of eight from the field here in the second half. And now we see the matchup zone, Roxy. They worked on this for about 30 to 35 minutes and walked through today. Something that they needed in case of emergency. And right now with the Zags on a run, they wanted to change it up. 8-2 run for Gonzaga. Kevin Penga slips inside. Left it short. Brock Bowden clears for Washington State. moving his feet on those on-ball picks. There's a foul and a reach-in against Gonzaga. Second person on Gary Bell Jr. Fourth Bulldogs team foul here in the second half. And this is danger time for the Cougars here. Gonzaga's on a run. They need to get Brock Modem in open touch, slashing to the basket or cutting to the hoop or try to free him up on the perimeter to where he can operate from the three-point line. Brock Modem. Kick out. Devontae Lacey missing the three. And it goes over the top and out of bounds to Gonzaga. Shake it up for Washington State is Will DiOrio, the junior from Bainbridge Island, Washington. Go, go, go. As he came down right in the middle of the key, he seemed to be clutching his ankle. So Will DiOrio getting looked at by the athletic trainer for Washington State. It's going to look at what happened there in the key and Will DiOrio went down. Oh, just that ankle twist right there. And it went both ways. Rolled on the outside first, and then it looks like it came back on the inside. Ken Bone, the head coach for the Cougars, also showing some concern for Will DiOrio. Has played well off the bench for Washington State this season. Two points tonight, coming off a strong game here Saturday night for Washington State. Beat a solid Portland team here in Portland. DiOrio had five points, four rebounds in that ball game. And here's another look at Will DiOrio oh. and the ankle, which turned on him right there going for the rebound. And, and the worst thing you see about it, like I said, Roxy, it goes both ways. It goes to the outside first and then comes back to the inside. And you hope that it doesn't look like he can put too much pressure on it at this point. But I've been fortunate enough. I didn't roll my ankle too many times as a player but the times I have I know that feeling you get the tingling feeling the blood is rushing in looks like he's gonna need some help off the court not wanting to put too much pressure on that that left foot there is Will DiOrio being helped off the floor toward the Washington State bench and Gonzaga leading it here 41-36 13.51 remaining in 10th ranked Gonzaga being threatened here by their rival Washington State. Thursday night on ESPNU, the Commodores take on freshman sensation Samaje Kristen and the Musketeers, Vanderbilt versus Xavier. Thursday, 7.30 on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Kevin Pangos has it spin out. But gets his own miss, and the Zags regroup here in the half court. How many shots has he just had go in and out tonight? A couple of the floaters, one three-pointer in the first half. Certainly not like last year when he lit up Washington State for 33 points and nine threes, tying the Gonzaga record, which was held by Dan Dicka. Mike Hart, the blue guy, keeping the ball alive, battling in the middle. Here's Gary Bell Jr. Eight point Gonzaga lead, their largest of the night. And look how Mike Hart, he knows his job is not to shoot out there, 
just a touch pass right in rhythm into the shooting pocket for Gary Bell to knock down the three. It's just the little things that make a huge difference. Royce Woolridge into the key and a block is called. He'll go to the free throw line, but great ball movement by Gonzaga. Excellent job here. You it starts with Pangos, a little bit of pick and roll. He kind of rejects it, picks up his dribble. But the beautiful touch pass, right on the money, he sees Gary Bell, anticipates that the shooter's open. Unselfish play by Mike Hart. Third foul on Mike Hart. Royce Woolridge shooting two. Now one of three at the line. The son of the late Orlando Woolridge played his college ball at Notre Dame. Sixth overall pick by the Chicago Bulls. In a 14-year outstanding NBA career for Orlando Woolridge. Man, was he one of the best athletes that you've ever seen? Some of the dunks that Orlando Woolridge had in his career. The force that he had attacking the rim. They were unreal. David Stockton comes in for Gonzaga. As Mike Hart gets a breather here. Pick and roll, Stockton to a the throw down, Elias Harris with 18. 46-37, Gonzaga. They're starting to take this game over here in the second half. Here's Devontae Lacey on the drive. Gets the move. And the shot to go with a strong take to the basket. Lacey's a big, powerful guard at 6'3", 206. Just overpowered Kevin Pangos on that on that possession. And a welcome return to the floor for Ken Bowen with Devontae Lacey back out there. Kelly Olenek slips back door and lays it in. Olenek has 10 all in the second half. And a 30-second timeout for Ken Bowen in Washington State as this game is starting to slip away from the Cougars. Well, the Zags did a great job of running high ball screen. This is their, their open set. So they bring the five-man Kelly Olenek up into a high ball screen. And Olenek's gonna roll on the first one. And we see the guy that's orchestrating it. His dad was pretty good at executing pick and rolls. Excellent pocket pass. Olenek with a beautiful touch pass drop ball to Harris, great execution. Now watch Gary Bell in the corner here. He shapes up behind the defense and that causes Mike Ladd, who should have been the help guy on Olenek, to roll up to the shooter, leaving Olenek wide open for the beautiful touch pass Stockton to Olenek. I don't know what Mark Few said at halftime to his team in the locker room, <laughs> but whatever he said, Miles, it worked because they've come out. Gonzaga has played like the Gonzaga Bulldogs we're used to seeing here in the second half. Well, one thing, and, and, and I'm sure he had some, some things to say about the turnovers and the rebounding, but one thing Coach Mark Few reiterated to us today is that this team is very easy to coach. They're very self-motivated, and they're together for a common goal. And uh, I'm sure there didn't have to be much said about how poorly they played in the first half. Mike Ladd rips out of three. Kelly Olenek the rebound, but he's called for steps. And he'll go right back to Washington State. The Zags down by four at the half will come storming back. Nine-point lead here in the Palouse. Gonzaga up by nine on Washington State. Tenth ranked Zags looking for their first 9-0 start in school history. And their December schedule gets even tougher as they try to navigate through the rest of the month miles. They have a big showdown at the Kennel Saturday night against Illinois, undefeated. Kansas State looming. Baylor, who just beat Kentucky. And then Oklahoma State on New Year's Eve. Well, look what those teams have done. Illinois won the Maui Invitational. Kansas State has returns a lot of veterans led by Rodney Magruder, Will Spradling, Angel Rodriguez. Uh, Bruce Weber doing a great job there. Like you said, Baylor's beating Kentucky. They still don't know really who they are. And Oklahoma State won the Puerto Rico tip-off. They beat a top five team by 20 points, uh, NC State at the time. Marcus Smart, one of the best players in the country, regardless of class, running the show there for Travis Ford. And then route to Gonzaga's ain't no start. They were winners in Orlando at the Old Spice class. Yeah, but we talked we talked to Coach Few at length today about his scheduling. And he just said it, it really it helps his teams for getting into the NCAA tournament. If they're ever on the bubble, they play great teams, they win those games. It helps with seeding. And when they're recruiting, kids want to play in big games against big time teams. And that's what Mark Few brings to the table for Gonzaga every year. Foul inside as Mike Ladd was held. 
And it's against Gary Bell Jr., his third. Six team fouls now on Mark Hughes' team here in the second half. They've been tested already. And that schedule is daunting. And December really always seems to be the, the toughest month for Gonzaga. That's when they really challenge themselves right before they head into West Coast Conference play. And we haven't even talked about how good the West Coast Conference is. Once again, San Francisco beat St. John's at home last night. Portland, Portland takes UNLV down to the wire in a game that I did. We know BYU's going to be tough. St. Mary's. St. Mary's with Del Vadova and Randy Bennett are Ooh, always going to be too. pretty good, too. Anthony Ireland, a, a player of the year candidate. WCC right now, when they added BYU, really becomes almost a three-bid league. And then Pacific moves into the WCC next year, and they're playing very well in Bob Thomason's final year in Stockton. 25 seeds as the head coach of the Tigers. Kevin Pangos open for a three. Rebound Washington State by Glad. Let's see if the Cougars have a run in them. Down seven midway through the second half here in Pullman. Large crowd, a lot of energy and excitement in this building tonight. DJ Shelton muscles it up. And it's tipped out to David Stockton. Gets tripped up. Cougars take it back. Devontae Lacey, adios! Hammer time, DJ Shelton. Timeout, Gonzaga. Roxy, that's a big time play here. <laughs> I just wanted to feel the energy of the crowd as Shelton threw that one down on the beautiful lob pass from Lacey. Stockton loses the ball on the crossover, no foul. Lacey almost gets his pocket pick, picks it up right at the exact time to make the pass, and delivers it on the fly. DJ Shelton rising up above and throwing it down and getting this real court crowd back in the mix. Hashtag SC Top 10 Miles. <laughs> you might be able to put that on there. You might be able to put that on there. I haven't seen the rest of the games across the country tonight. But that was pretty good. That was pretty special right there. Not sure what the officials are looking at across the way as Mike Cypher is on your left, Michael Greenstein on the right. And they're checking something out there in that last sequence. 9.39 remaining. Gonzaga had opened up with their largest lead of the night at 9. And two straight buckets by Wazoo. And the Cougars have cut it to 5. Washington State trying to ride the wave of emotion here inside Creel Court at Beasley Coliseum. A lot of Gonzaga fans have made the trek down from Spokane. Well, this is about 75 miles away. And they're doing it with great talent. Modem, only two points so far in the second half is one reason kind of why they've lost the lead here. They need to get him some more touches in these last 10 minutes of the game if they want to pull out the victory because he is their, their main score inside and out. But other guys are trying to keep it tight until Bodum can find the rhythm again. The officials got clarification from Tommy Nunez, one of the officials here. They were trying to see if there was an elbow thrown during the sequence there, but the officials did not see anything that warranted any action take. That's what they were checking the monitor for. Now one thing, Roxy, you notice that's a lot different than college and in the NBA. Gonzaga ran two straight high ball screen sets. Scored on both of them. Why not go back to it again? You got the same, pretty much the same personnel in there. Run that set again until Washington State figures out how to stop it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's exactly right. Go right back to that open set, put a Linux, let Stockton run that high pick and roll with a Linux, roll into the basket, let Pango shape up from behind. Tipped in by Kelly Olenek. Or go to your all-conference guy and Elias Harris drive to the basket and let the seven-footer clean it up for you. Olenek with 12 all in the second half. Little zone look from Gonzaga now. The 
need to find Modem in that high post area where he can be a passer, a driver, or a scorer. Vernick Drew long on a three. And going for the rebound, they get a foul on the floor, and it's against Gonzaga. And it's against Kevin Pangos. And here you see the drive by Harris. And because Modem has to step over and help, he loses blockout responsibility on Olenek, who gets a free ride to the basket. Third person on Pangos. And Washington State now with a bonus, a one and one for Mike Ladd. Now one and two at the line tonight. He'll get the bonus. Ladd, a redshirt senior from Seattle, Washington. Went to one of the powerhouse high schools in Rainier Beach. Some elite players out of there, Jamal Crawford, Doug Christie, Nate Robinson, Terry Willi uh, Terrence Williams. Big time pickup games at Rainier Beach during the summertime. And Ladd had a rough season here last year. Played with a right thumb injury the entire year. A lot of pain, tried to fight through it. Elias Harris. Zaga by foul. Shot clock at 10. Stopped it. Slotted away by Brock Moda. Six on the shot clock. I almost feel they were too unselfish on that possession. When Stockton was probing, the defense kicked it out to Harris, who's a more than capable three-point shooter. Modem does a great job of just using his length to make the play defensively. Harris hits the open three. Like I just said, he's more than capable of knocking down threes. Only 20% only this year. Scouting report was to back off him, and he makes him pay. 21 for Elias Harris. Gonzaga has built the lead back up to eight. Can't be content to just pass it around the three-point line. Put the ball on the floor. Oh. Rebound Harris. Gonzaga pushes. Mango surveys the floor, backs it out. Matched up with Moda. Looking high-low. Mike Hart, three! Mike Hart is five of seven from downtown this year. 30-second timeout, Ken Bone in Washington State, largest lead for the Zags. Roxy, Mike Hart's the player of the game. Totally changed the complexion of, of this game right now with starting in the second half. Defensively has been unbelievable. Great skip pass by the seven-footer Olenek. Unselfish play, but Mike Hart, he started it in the second half. This comeback for them to get the lead, and now he's finishing the job on the offensive end where he's really not relied upon too much. Despite only three points in the game, he is your MVP of this one. Changed the complexion of the game. With his defensive effort, his intensity, rotating the guys on defense, Two charges in the second half, diving on loose balls, got a steal, totally made the difference for the Zags. And the senior from Portland, Oregon, just hitting that three to push the lead at double digits for the Zags for the first time tonight. And a former walk-up, he made this Gonzaga team his freshman year in open tryouts and has earned a scholarship for Mark Few and Gonzaga. And, and I think the thing that people should take away from Mike Hart is that you can impact the game in other ways besides scoring. So many young guys just think it's all about my points and my numbers, you know, how many threes I hit, how many shots I get a game. But if you want to win a national championship and be recognized at a high level, you do the little things to win it all. Bernie Drew missing the pull-up. Gary Bell Jr. stripped away by Devontae Lacey. Pull-up three. Gutsy shot by Lacey. Lacey with 12 and his return to the floor for Ken Bone. Olenek drops it in. How hard is that to guard? A four, a four, five pick and roll, and a seven footer roll into the basket, and your four man delivers it, a touch pass on the money. Olenek keeps it high and lays it in. Here's Lacey stepping out, DJ Shelton. Clock at 10. Here's Modem. Gets the touch. Kick out. Lacey a three. Swish! Season high tying 15 
for Devontae Lacy. Who's trying to pull Washington State back. And here they go back to that high pick and roll. That's been so effective. And Stockton just throws the ball away. Turnover on Gonzaga. The Cougars getting the ball back. Washington State has beaten Gonzaga two of the last three times here in Pullman, but it's 10th ranked Gonzaga up seven late in the Palouse. 58 51, Gonzaga up seven on Washington State. 558 remaining, and Miles take us inside the play here for Gonzaga. Well, here's some of the versatility in this Zags offense. You got the four man Elias Harris right here with the basketball, and then the five, Kelly Olinick. They come run a 4 5 pick and roll. Awkward for a college team to guard. Modem doesn't know what to do. He's caught in no man's land. Then you have only a 6 2 guard rotating on the weak side, trying to cover Kelly Olinick on the roll to the basket. Great execution, Harris to Olenek for the bucket. Coming up, more hoops on ESPNU on Sunday. The Black Bears take on Michael Snare and the Knowles. Then at six, Miles Simon will be in Berkeley for UNLV against the Golden Bears of California. Maine, Florida State at four, UNLV Cal at six, Sunday at ESPNU. Also live on Watch ESPN. ESPN, the home court, college hoops. You saw UNLV last night. I did. They're very good. They they were playing with art, without arguably their best player, Mike Moser, a Wooden Award candidate. Had a left hip strain. Could possibly be back for Sunday's game. But they have a Canadian in Anthony Bennett, who's having an All-American type first month of the season, let's say. But a lot of talent down there for Dave Rice. But let's not short sell the Bears. Alan Crabb, Justin Cobb, one of the best backcourts in America. Mike Montgomery's team winning a direct TV classic in Anaheim Thanksgiving weekend. Here's Brock Moto driving, dishing at the rim, missing inside. Royce Woolridge cleared by Elias Harris and Gonzaga. Injury update from Washington State. Will DiOrio, left ankle injury, is out for the rest of this one tonight. Here's Elias Harris. Kelly Olenek against Bodum. Inside to Harris. Blocked. Out of bounds. Last touch by Washington State. Two on the shot clock for Gonzaga. On the other end, 6'10. Brock Modem gets that ball at the top of the key. Gets a little screen. But look at the beautiful shovel pass. But Olenek does an excellent job at seven feet, not trying to block the shot, just alter the shot of Bullridge. Good job defensively on the rotation. Olenek missing as the shot clock expired. Here come the Cougars. Five minutes remaining. Washington State down seven. Haven't heard much from Brock Bowden here in the second half. Only one field goal attempt. Short of the three, Devontae Lacey. And Harris clears another rebound. shortened up his rotation here in the second half. Pretty much sticking with the five guys that started the half. Great balance by Elias Harris, avoiding the contact and getting the basketball. Excellent ball and player movement, a nice dive to the rim, and then a soft touch, he doesn't charge. Brock Bono, three! That was very much needed for Washington State. Approaching four minutes to go. Gonzaga leading it by six. Here's Pangos. At the top of the arc, rattles out. And the rebound cleared by Junior Longris, the freshman for the Cougars. I gotta think that Loden gets another touch here. There he is. He can take him off the bounce. He shoots. Gets it! Had a little bit of space, and he cuts the lead in half. Zags by three. Timeout, Mark Few. Back-to-back threes by Brock Modem, and Washington State within three. Modem, after being quiet for most of the half, had only had one field goal attempt in about the first 15 minutes of the half. 
gets two touches. Kelly Olynyk, you're seven feet tall. When you have your hands down and your knees bent, you're about six foot five. Hands down on both of them. Too late on that one to put his hand up. Brock Modem, great rhythm jump shot, just squares up, knocks it down, showing why he led the Pac-12 in scoring last year, already at 19 points a game this season. 9-2 run by the Cougars to climb within three. 331 remaining. Modem with 18 points. He came into tonight. Four of 22 from downtown this season. Four of six tonight. And they're rocking here at Beasley Coliseum. And a near capacity crowd of the Palouse. And this great rivalry game between these two. The schools separated by about 75 miles. Here's Pangos. Mike Hart. Ball stripped, last touch by Washington State. Out of bounds to Gonzaga. 3.15 remaining, the Cougars behind Brock Moto are getting back into this one. Pumping up the crowd is the 6'10 senior Aussie. Brock Modem and the Cougs within three. Tenth rank Gonzaga clinging to a three point lead on Washington State. 3.15 remaining. Gonzaga looking for their first 9-0 start in school history. And Brock Modem here in the second half has pulled Washington State back into the game. Yeah, and it's been really in the last two possessions where he has two face-up threes. He brings the seven-footer Olenek out to the perimeter, taking him away from the basket, just faces up, knocks down the three, two rhythm jumpers, getting the coup back within striking distance in a one-possession game. Shot clock at 17 for Gonzaga. If you're Mark Few, are you looking to go inside to Harris and Olenek? I want Harris. Going away, looking for Harris. Nine to run for Washington State, down three with three to play. Lacey for the tie. Here's Elias Harris. Runner. Olenek. And one. Kelly Olenek, a new career high. Second personal in Junior Longris. And Kelly Olenek with 16 points all in the second half. He had 15 on Saturday night in their win against Pacific. Also had 15 a couple of seasons ago against Lafayette. And Olenek with 17 points now. Well, the one thing that was emphasized about Kelly Olenek's redshirt year is that he's become a better finisher around the basket. And he showed that tonight, finishing most of the shots in the paint area. And tag it again by three. You're looking to get it to Modem? Modem or Lacey, those have been the guys in the second half. Tipped, Modem gets it. Ball stripped, Mike Hart, a foul. Fourth on Hart. Mentioned how Modem was bringing Washington State back, but his tag team partner is Devontae Lacey. And let's remember, Devontae Lacey hasn't played in two weeks. Sprained his, hurt his tendon in his knee. He's pumped up, believes they can beat the number 10 team in the country. Only had one practice on Monday, limited minutes. Coach Bone said he was going to have to watch how Devontae Lacey was managing his body, his limb, as the game went on. But the adrenaline kicks in a lot of times in a big game and a great atmosphere like this. And it's really tearing Devontae Lacey through. Played 25 minutes tonight. 78% foul shooter hits both. Bodum has scored at least 20 in each of the last three games. The Cougars are within one. Pangos. Up two screens. Pull up. Lad the rebound. Washington.
Washington State. The Cougars looking for the lead. Last five made field goals for Washington State have been threes. Sometimes when you have so many options you can go to, who is the go-to guy? Lacey is fouled. And with 1.29 to play, Devontae Lacey to the strike to shoot two. Elias Harris, his third foul. Saying for the Zags, they're so versatile and have so many guys that can put the ball in the basket. But who's the answer? Who's going to get the ball down the stretch when it's in crunch time? We know who it's going to for Washington State. At least tonight, you know Brock Modin's getting a touch, and Devontae Lacey's feeling it. So it's going to either one of those two guys. Three high, tying 19 now for Lacey. The sophomore from Tacoma had 19 in a game last year against Oregon, and he gives Washington State the lead, a new career high of 20. And Taga has a 30 and a full timeout. The Cougars have just their full. Possession arrow points toward Gonzaga. Olenek on the drive. Split the double team. And one, Kelly Olenek with a strong finish for the Zags. That's unbelievable, Roxy, to me. This is, this is a seven-footer. Taking guys off the bounce, absorbs the contact, the spin move, through the double team, gets the and one. Kelly Olenek has just really improved his game, his skill level in the last year that he had off, really paying off his strength, his conditioning, becoming a reliable scorer. And there's that man, the Mike Hart. He's the blue guy. Gets the loose ball. Gonzaga, a minute to play, up one with possession. Hart only cares about one thing, about two things, playing hard and getting wins. the shot clock, Gary Bell. Here's a Got it! First three-pointer of the season for Kelly Olenek, a career-high 22, all in the second half. Zags by four, 33 and a half seconds remain. Mike Hart who's the MVP right now in many Bulldogs fans' hearts. Keeps the ball alive with the offensive rebound. Smart play, doesn't try to do too much with it. Brock Modem too slow on the closeout. Kelly Olenek making a pay from deep with the three-point bomb. Those two guys have been spectacular here in the second half, giving the Zags the lead with 33.5 seconds left on the clock. Final timeout taken by Washington State. Unite coming up next on ESPNU. Kansas State quarterback and Heisman finalist Colin Klein joins the show. We ask what the best coaching job is in college football and a high school dunk you have to see. You've got to see this to believe it. That's coming up next on Unite. That's a great show. I love Danny Cannell on there. They do a lot of interesting, funny stuff. They got the DJ playing. But we got the best action right now on television, <laughs> right here on ESPNU. The Zags and the Cougs, in-state rivals, going down to the last minute. Mike Cyphers, Michael Greenstein, now Tommy Nunez comes in to join the party. The officials are checking to see how much time should be on the clock. And that's where they were checking with the monitor across the way from us at the scores table. It is the final timeout for Washington State and Ken Bone. They are out of it. Gonzaga has a 30 and a 4. Team fouls, 9 on Gonzaga, so the next one, Washington State is in the double bonus. Washington State has committed 7, so if it's not a shooting foul, the Zags will go to the line for a 1-1 one one here. Personal foul problems for Gonzaga. Mike Hunt has 4. Now Washington State, nobody has more than 3. Washington State, Miles, 7 and 121 all time against top 10 opponents. And we've had to put that yeah, in. Yeah, that was for you. Yeah, I, I was an assistant coach on, on, <laughs> on that team. And they were ready for us that night. They were lighting us up from the three-point line. Last time Washington State beat a ranked opponent, 
as they beat their rivals, the Washington Huskies, back at the end of January of 2011. Now, Washington State has been involved in close games this year. Two of their three losses have come by either two points or an overtime. They lost an overtime to Pepperdine and lost on a buzzer beater against Texas A&M. And right now, there's, there's a lot of time left in this game. It's a two-possession game. You do not have to have a three-point shot if you're Washington State. I, want to, I would love to see something come into the basket or a kick out for three. And they get a foul off the ball and an offensive foul against Washington State. Trying to free himself up. Ken Bone is beside himself. Devontae Lacey called for his second. And trying to free himself up is called for a push. 27 and a half seconds left. Here's that last sequence. Well, you'll see Devontae Lacey on the left side of the screen guarded by Gary Bell. And that's an easy call, and that's the right call, and it doesn't matter if it's the end of the game or not. He made the correct call, fully extended his arms, created the separation, didn't give Gary Bell a chance to defend him. Mike Ladd fouls Kevin Pangos, 26 points, six for them. And one and one for Pangos. And, and, and I'm a Monday morning quarterback just like anybody else, and people say, let the players decide the game. The players did decide the game because Devontae Lacey committed a foul right there, so he decided that possession for Washington State. So here's Pangos in the line, three of four tonight. Held to just six points. After last year against Ken Bone's team, went for 33 and nine threes. And remember, Gonzaga is a poor free throw shooting team, only 61% of the season. But Pangos a great foul shooter. Wouldn't you know he misses. Junior Longris the rebound. Broadcasters James, it's my fault. Here's Lacey, off balance three. Too hard. Junior Longris, offensive rebound, kick out. Motor, three. No timeouts for Washington State. They're within one, 14 seconds remaining. And we have a foul and a hold against Washington State. And Gary Bell will go to the free throw line. And Washington State in complete scramble mode there. Devontae Lacey forces up a tough three over the seven-footer. Olenek and Pangos, great hustle by Longris to keep that ball line and Brock Modem steps right into an NBA-level three-point shot to cut it to one. And, I, and I'm okay with that foul because it's a dead ball foul. I know they wanted to get a steal on the inbound, but no time elapses off the clock. And now they send Gary Bell, who's only shot four free throws on the season for the Zags, one for four. Double bonus, rattles it out. Now Bell one of five from the line on the year. One more shot again, the double bonus, that was the 10th team foul on the Cougars. Washington State has no timeouts, so they need to go. They gotta go quick, and Ken Bone is orchestrating the play that he wants right now from the sideline. Two point game. Here comes Devontae Lacey. Drives to the basket. We're tied. Here come the Zags. Pangos, five seconds. Drives. Runner. Got it. Pangos with 2.2. Lacey for the win. Ball game. Gonzaga escapes. And for the first time in Gonzaga basketball history, they are 9 0. Kevin Pangos with the bucket. 2.2 seconds remaining. Gonzaga squeaks past Washington State. Roxy, I'm not gonna lie. I got chills from that last play. I love college basketball. This is what it's about. Players making plays. Look at the heart that these guys play with, the determination. Unbelievable action by both teams. Two excellent teams battling here tonight. And Foreman Devontae Lacey crosses up Gary Bell, gets all the way to the rim, but I like the composure by Gonzaga. You see Pangos give a peek at the clock. He knew he had plenty of time, that he didn't have to rush a jacked up three-point shot. Watch when he gets across half court. Gives a peek right there. And then you don't want to foul in that situation. Woolridge does a good job of going straight up. And a heads-up play by everybody. 
Gonzaga doesn't celebrate. Nobody runs on the floor. They get back. Look at all five guys sprinting back on defense to try to make the final play. Once again, our final score, 10th rate Gonzaga behind 23 from Elias Harris and 22 from Kelly Olenek survives 71-69 over Washington State. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's Unite. For Miles Simon, our outstanding ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein saying goodnight from Pullman. Unite is next. <laughs>